When searching for which Linux distro to use or distribution, you've probably come across some weird, odd terms being used to distinguish one type of distro from another. Terms like fork, respin, flavor, remix, derivative, and some more. You may even find terms like Ubuntu-based, Debian-based, Arch-based, and some more. Well, these terms are actually helpful. They may not seem it, but they are. They help you differentiate between how a particular Linux distro will work from another one. But if you don't know what these terms mean, well, it's like navigating a maze. In this video, I'm going to break down these terms, explain what they mean, and how you can use these terms to narrow down your options in picking the best Linux distro for you. Hi, I'm Michael Tunnell with the Destination Linux Network and I make tech videos with a focus on free and open source software, Linux-based operating systems, gaming on Linux, and just all around tech that I think is cool. So if this is something that you're interested in, then be sure to subscribe and ring that bell because you don't wanna miss out on all the great content that is coming up on this channel. If you wanna be kept up to date on what's happening in the Linux world, then you need to check out my podcast, This Week in Linux. This Week in Linux is a weekly Linux news show that I host where I let you know what's going on in Linux, the ecosystem, the community, etc. And I give you my take based on my over 20 years experience using Linux. If news isn't your thing, then check out my other podcast, Destination Linux where I'm joined by two friends to talk about Linux and open source. This show is great for all levels of experience, so whether you're a beginner or a guru of sudo, then I think you'll enjoy it. We have a blast on that show as well, so if you're looking for a podcast to learn about Linux and have a lot of fun doing it, then that's the one to check out. So we have a lot of stuff to talk about in this case, but we're gonna talk about it in different tiers and sections. So first of all, there are two terms that are like the main hierarchy terms. We have independent distributions and derivative distributions. So on one hand, there's the independent, and then the other hand is the derivative. So on the independent, we have a lot of the foundational type distributions, and then the derivatives are based on those distributions. And inside of the derivatives, there's actually quite a few other sub-tiers, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's talk about the independents. So an independent distribution is a type of distribution that's not based on any other distribution. So this would be something that's like Debian or Arch or Fedora, OpenSUSE, Magia, Void, Solus, Alpine. They share some similarities though, like some of them are RPM, RPM based distributions, other ones are Debian based distributions and or Deb based. And uh, that's another topic for the package. That's a package management differentiation. So maybe I should, I'll, I'll do a video on that as well. But just to know that an independent distribution is not based directly on another distribution. So for example, you might see the Debian based, Arch based, and also Ubuntu based. But the difference is Ubuntu based just happens to be a very, very popular derivative of another distribution. Debian is the independent version of that kind of family. And then Ubuntu is a derivative of Debian. And then the distros that are based on Ubuntu are derivatives of Ubuntu. So essentially, those are a derivative of a derivative. I hope that cleaned that part up, but it doesn't sound like it. Let's talk about derivatives though. So in the derivative section, we have a bunch of sub-tiers and even some sub-tiers inside of those sub-tiers. I'm going to do a more overview of what they are, and then we'll go into more details. So first of all, we have forks, flavors, remixes, and respins. These are the main four. Now there are a couple other ones like spins, and there's also some ambiguous stuff in a couple of these main ones. So now that we have the different tiers listed, let's go into some more details about what they are. So a fork and a flavor are well-defined terms, but a remix and a respin are not really that well-defined. So let's start with those. We'll go into more details after this, but first of all, remix and respin essentially mean distribution, derivative, other than other distribution. Basically the same thing as derivative, but there's a little bit more nuance to it. So we'll go back to, we'll come back to those after this. So forks and flavors. A fork is a distribution that is based on another distribution, AKA derivative, that does not require the other distribution to facilitate anything. So Ubuntu is a fork of Debian. It is a derivative and a fork. So Debian makes its own packages on its own servers and that sort of stuff. 
Ubuntu takes those packages, pulls them into their own infrastructure, and sends packages and delivers those, or builds those and delivers those to the users. That means they don't use Debian's infrastructure in any way to facilitate their distro, aka a fork. The next thing is flavor, and a flavor is a derivative that does use an infrastructure in the same way a remix does, except a remix does not have official sanction by the base distro, and a flavor does. So a flavor is a distribution based on another distribution that has officially been sanctioned by the base distro to do it, and there's also a lot more benefits than that. It's not just you're sanctioned to do it, you're official or whatever. It also means that in most cases, like Ubuntu, they give you infrastructure access, but also not just to pull from, but also to push to. So you make your own packages, you make your own improvements, and you can put it on Ubuntu's infrastructure, and you can help the other flavors in a variety of different ways as well, like integration between working together, making your own packages, they can pull stuff from your packages and put it into theirs, and a lot of different collaboration value in being a flavor. So that's why a lot of flavors exist for Ubuntu, because not only are they benefiting themselves by using the infrastructure. They're also helping each other and even helping Ubuntu by making their own packages and improving diff various different pieces. There's also some other stuff like they coordinate the releases together. So when Ubuntu makes a new release, you know that the flavors of Ubuntu also have a new release that same day because it's all coordinated together because they're officially sanctioned. Now let's jump back to the remix respin stuff because that's a bit ambiguous and we need to clarify as much as possible anyway. So remixes and respins, as I said, are ambiguous. They mean stuff, but they also mean the same thing, and they both mean different things, and they both mean both of those different things. So it's a little bit of an ambiguous term uh, because it's not really clearly defined. Maybe this video will help the community and ecosystem decide to define those things specifically, but I will tell you what they mean, at least as far as I can differentiate between what they mean. So a remix is a distribution based on another distribution. However, also commonly referred to as a distribution that is remixed to attempt to become a flavor. Now that's not necessarily true exactly because some remixes have no intent to be flavors. So that's why there's some nuance. So it does mean that, and it also doesn't mean that. And a respin also means that, and it also doesn't mean that. Respins are also sometimes used to say that a distribution is trying to become a flavor, or in some cases, spins of the original. Sometimes people use the term spin to mean flavor. It depends on the distro and the community which one is used, but flavor is the most commonly used for that purpose. So that's why it's a bit ambiguous. Respins kind of mean the same as remixes, and also kind of don't, while at the same time, kind of do. That's a weird sentence to say, wow. To recap that part, a remix is a distribution based on another distribution. Just outright in general, it's basically another term for derivative. But at the same time, it is a distribution based on another distribution that is trying to become a flavor and a respin is essentially the same thing in both ways. Hopefully that clarified that for you. I know it didn't because I mean, I heard what I said. <laughs> All right, now we're on forks again. So there's a difference between a one type of fork and another type of fork. There's a little bit more nuance depending on who you talk to, but mostly it's just two sub-tiers of forks. These are not actually defined really. The fork term is really well defined, but also the sub-tiers aren't. On the bright side, I get to name them. So I'm gonna name it as dinner fork and appetizer fork. I'm kidding, I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous, I know that, but I also think it might be fun. But no, we're not doing that. Okay, we're not doing that. We're gonna call it a hard fork and a soft fork. So we have a hard fork, meaning that it is a forked distribution that does not rely on the original distribution in any way whatsoever in terms of facilitating their files and packages and everything to their users. However, it also no longer uses anything from the original distribution. So if you look at a hard fork, you have a fork that is no longer dependent on the original distro that it forked from. In terms of a soft fork, it basically means that it is a derivative of a distribution that doesn't rely on the, uh, the original to facilitate anything, but it does go back to that distribution on occasion, periodically. So a good example of that, Ubuntu and Manjaro. 
Both of them are derivatives that are forks that are soft forks. With Ubuntu and Debian, it is taking packages from Debian, putting it into its own infrastructure, and then occasionally going back to Debian, pulling in some more, and repeatedly continue cycle. It still uses Debian in many ways, but never like directly. It pulls everything into itself and uses its own packages, own infrastructure to facilitate and deliver things to their users. Same thing with Manjaro. Manjaro is a derivative fork, soft fork of Arch. So you have Arch that is the foundational distro for Manjaro. It's a same kind of thing. They have their own infrastructure, their own way to facilitate and deliver packages to their users without using Arch directly. But it still goes back to Arch quite often. So that is a soft fork. So there you go. You now know what a independent distribution is, a derivative distribution is, and the sub-tiers of fork, flavor, remix, and respin, what those are. Admittedly, remix and respin, a little bit still not clear. You might be wondering why this is important, because you want to know what type of distribution you're using and whether or not this distribution uses another distribution. So if you are using something that is based on Debian, you may be using a derivative that is a fork, like Ubuntu, or you may be using a derivative that is a remix respin style, like MX Linux. And then you have other things, Linux Mint or Elementary or Pop! OS that are all derivatives of Ubuntu, which is a derivative of a derivative. Debian, then Ubuntu, then Linux Mint, Elementary, Pop! OS. The difference here though is pretty interesting and I kind of wanted to put a little section here to, because I think this is just very interesting. There's a lot of distributions. There's a lot of derivatives, but Ubuntu is the only one I can think of that the vast majority of the derivatives on it are all remixes or respins, not forks. I can only think of one fork that is Triskel. So Triskel is a fork of Ubuntu, but it's also fairly old. So they forked it in 2016 and they are still on 2016. They are working on newer versions, but it's still back then. So in terms of like up-to-date packages and distribution or derivatives of Ubuntu that are consistently up-to-date, none of them are forks. If you're looking at Linux Mint or Elementary or Pop! OS or Zorin or anything else, all of those rely on Ubuntu in some way. So typically, for example, Linux Mint, Elementary and Pop! OS, I'm using these because they all essentially do the same thing where they create their own custom packages. And in the case of Elementary and Linux Mint, they create their own desktop environment sitting on top of the Ubuntu base and their own extra packages, but they still use the infrastructure of Ubuntu. Now, that's not necessarily saying that's a bad thing, but it is worth noting because none of them are officially sanctioned by Canonical to do so. It's interesting to me because it's kind of like Canonical is paying for the bandwidth and the servers and all the building and all the resources and stuff like that for all of these distributions, but none of them give credit to Ubuntu and Canonical for doing it. So what do you think? Do you think I got it right? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. I know there are some little bit of nuances that are not completely defined, but I'm curious to find out what you think about the different terms. I'm pretty sure I covered every basis, but maybe I didn't. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. And if you like this awesome shirt that I'm wearing, you can get your own by going to destinationlinux.network slash store. I'll have a link in the description, but uh, this is an awesome shirt. I mean, I did design it, so I'm a little bit biased, but you can check it out at the Destination Linux Network store. And I'll have, a, again, link in the description. Thanks again for watching. And remember, always try to keep an open mind and always try to use open source. I'll see you next time. I nailed that outro. Like, nailed it. That's enough talking. I'm actually in the, like, in-screen part now and I'm still talking.